Good morning. Um, my name is Shelby Babcock and I am, um, this is my final project for data analytics class. Um, for the project, I chose to look at the economics effect of COVID-19 um, and how, believe it or not, there are some companies that have actually seen a benefit to the um, lifestyle changes that we've had to make, but at the same time, there's a, a lot more companies that have seen kind of a debilitating effect on um, on their numbers and their their growth and their um, ab ab uh, ability to stay open because of all of um, what is going on around us. So kind of to kick off, I just wanted to take a quick look at the numbers. What, why are we spending so much time talking about this? Um, as you can see, this is our country. Um, this is America, and you can kind of see where the hot pockets are. Um, if you've been following this in the news at all, it's no secret that New York is is definitely um, what's been hit the most out of the whole country. Um, but then you also kind of just see it trending where it's the borders and the coastlines that that tend to have the hot, uh, the larger pockets of cases um, versus the the middle part of the country. You see a little a couple of um, areas like Illinois, the Chicago area um, that might might not trend with that, but overall it's the coastline and the borders that, that kind of have large pockets. So as of today, we stand, we've had over 5 million cases have been tested positive for COVID. And of those, there's been about 160,000 deaths. Um, so you're looking at a death rate of about 0.03% overall. So um, now that we've got a little bit of a picture on why, on what, what exactly is going on, I'm gonna dive into my topics. Um, I work in the finance industry, so I have seen uh, a lot of the effects of the stock market going up and down and the businesses having to close and the money that's been given out and what our business is going to do with that. And so I just kind of wanted to look at um, a few different layers of economic um, impact that we that we've seen in 2020 so the first question i wanted to dive into was in regards to the stock market there there are some companies that have actually seen a large uptick in their in their value due to this while other companies are just completely bleeding out and so um just let's look at the differences on there and what 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 makeup is in a company that's actually seeing kind of a benefit from the lifestyle changes that have had to be made um, so I made a tree map here that just kind of, it, it kind of gives a quick look at, at, at just that. Um, it is clear Novavax is a um, vaccine company and vaccines are all, the, it's all about the vaccine, trying to find the vaccine for the virus. So it is no surprise that you see Novavax up here in one of the darkest purple colors, which shows you that it has seen a, a large uptick um, uh, since since this all began. Um, you see companies like Zoom, which is what I'm on right now. Um, Zoom had a growth rate of over 100% after companies were forced to, to move to the work from home environment and everybody's having to download Zoom, use Zoom for all internal and external meetings. Um, if you come over here, you see Netflix, no surprise, streaming services have kind of been just killing it because people are stuck at home and they, they want to we want to have something to do. Um, and then Clorox down here uh, has also experienced a lot of growth because much like vaccines, the other talk is all about being clean, cleaning, sanitizing, and um, that's all about Clorox. That's all what Clorox does. So that's, again, no surprise. Um, then you see companies, Norwegian, United, Dine, Boeing, Disney. Um, these are the gold color. And then as you can see from um, our diagram over here, the gold color is, is showing the companies that are, that are really suffering. And you see that there's a lot in common, Norwegian, United, Boeing, all travel related, um, Dine, MGM, Disney, all entertainment related. Um, they're, not, they're not able to keep up. They're, they're, they're just bleeding out. And um, you know, Disney actually had could, no way they could have seen this coming, but not too long ago, they released the, um, the Disney Plus streaming service. And, and that's definitely why they're this color gold and not just a very, very deep gold. Because um, obviously their parks and, and other, other areas of revenue are, are, are completely suffering, but lucky for them, they had put the time and effort into coming up with the Disney Plus app. And, and people have a lot more time to be streaming um, different TV shows in 2020. So um, as you can see, yeah, there's a variety there. 
while some people are really, really seeing an amazing growth percentage, you've got a lot of other ones that are really, really suffering and trying to figure out how, how they're going to get through this. Um, the next thing, the next question I wanted to pose is kind of talking about the CARES Act. Uh, where did that money really go? Um, the CARES Act was the kind of economic relief package that was passed by Congress. Um, it was such a large amount of money and I actually found a pretty cool data set that kind of helped break it down. So it was about two trillion dollars that was given out and I don't know about you but I have a hard time fathoming that. And um, it's, it's hard to really understand where all that money went when you're thinking about it on that level. So I found a cool data set that allowed me to create this um, diagram that shows, let's take that $2 trillion and let's make it $100 and let's make it a lot easier to swallow and kind of break down. Um, so as you can see, a large percentage of the money over 70% went to three areas being the American public, um, big corporations and small businesses. So those are probably three of the, of the largest groups that you've kind of heard about through, through this. Um, small businesses, it's no, no secret that they have really been struggling to figure out how they're gonna make 2020 work. How are they gonna keep their doors open? And as a part of the CARES Act, the uh, Paycheck Protection Program was launched and that's where most of this um, the 376 billion or 1880 out of the 100 came from. Um, big corporations were given a very large bailout. Um, the American public was also given um, stimulus checks. Uh, there was um, lots of money given out to people, whether it was from the um, additional stimulus checks that, that, that the government handed out to people of a certain qualification or the additional unemployment that was allowable from um, given the amount of people that were having to go on unemployment. Um, so you can kind of get a quick glance here at, at just where that money went. Um, transportation, kind of smaller over here, and then you see a, a, a catch-all of other areas that got about 11, 11 cents out of the 100 or, or 2.2 billion, which sounds a lot better than 11 cents, but um, kind of moving to the next area, it's letting, letting us break this down a little bit further. Um, so obviously the American public encompasses a lot of different scenarios, but you can kind of see here, as I discussed a second ago, um, out of that 28, a lot of it was, uh, the, the cash that was paid out um, uh, to individuals um, and then the other portion of it was unemployment insurance where they were given an additional um, sum of money uh, given given the circumstances. Then you have big corporations, loans to corporations versus loans to airlines, um, small business and as a part of the PPP you can see that a large portion of the of the money that was given to um, small businesses it is actually going to be forgivable. There's uh, stipulations there, but it's $17.45 $17 cents out of that 100 is going to be in theory completely forgivable. And so we're when we're talking about economic effects, we're going to continue to see the economic effects from that forgivable loans not getting paid back, but um, for years to come in, in different, different ways. Um, so kind of moving to my next topic area is there, I wanted to take a quick glance at what is a rest or what is an industry that is specifically um, kind of really just suffering from this. Um, and it's no secret that restaurants are just that, um, you know, with given the, everything that is going on as far as quarantine and, um, and, and capacity level on people being out and being places, restaurants have had to completely reevaluate how they do business. Um, and I wanted to kind of just take a deeper dive into what the numbers of restaurants actually look like. So um, you can see this chart and you've got the purple is a full service restaurant while the um, gold is a quick service restaurant. Um, and the, the numbers are pretty easy to see right off the bat there. Um, it's done, it's, I've separated it out by date. Um, and so kind of starting here in this right here, we're gonna go down and that's right in March. So Mar the first week in March. And um, if you'll remember back, that's kind of when you started seeing the, the, the orders for um, the quarantine being handed out by both 
President Trump um, kind of hinting towards that, but as well as different state governors kind of putting those in place. So, um, you know, looking here in February of 2017 at the amount of service that quick service and full service were, were, uh, were doing in their restaurants and what a dramatic drop it makes. It makes a quick drop down to its lowest point here in March of 20 or March 23rd of earlier this year. Um, and you know, the good news is as you look at the data, you can kind of see it, it's trending back a little bit um, here in August, first week in August. Um, it's much better than it was on March the 23rd, but um, you can imagine this graphic continuing to go through the rest of the year. And there's, it, as you see, it, it's up and down, you know, it's not, it's not just up, 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 it's, it's up and down. And um, so I, I would expect that if we came back and reevaluated this in December, you, you kind of see the same thing. Um, I don't, based, based on the data that I'm looking at, it doesn't look like we're going to see quite as quick of an uptick as we did down downward spiral um but you know we'll, we'll, we'll take it as encouraging that the progress is being made um just because again it, it, it all comes back to when these restaurants are are being um are able to service people it, it's it's a better economic situation for um for the business owners um and so on the road on the road to recovery just a lot slower than the initial downfall was um Kind of on this on a similar subject, uh, you can't talk about the economy and the effects without diving into unemployment. Um, back when again when this all began March April, we we saw unemployment numbers that we've never seen anything close to in the history of our country. Um, so I kind of wanted to just take a a quick look at what that exactly looked like. And um, shoot, hold on just one second, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, I wanted to take a quick picture of what unemployment looked like and what um, if there was any trends in regards to are they are there higher unemployment in the areas that are being more affected, the hot spots as we call them. So um, I took the data and made a um, a map by zip code, and you can see here that. Um, it, you see the dark purple where the unemployment really is and you know Florida kind of here in the borders as we talked about earlier the borders are really where you're seeing more of the um, the hot spots and the higher cases um, and you, you kind of see that a little bit here um, you do see interestingly enough New York where the largest um, cases were is not that dark so um, you, you definitely see down here in Florida over here, Arizona, New Mexico, somewhat in California, definitely up in Seattle, Washington area. Um, but then again, if you just kind of compare the two, um, if you give me a second, we'll be able to do a side by side and you can kind of, I think the most surprising part of this data for me was New York specifically. Um, as you see in the bottom map, it's definitely the largest circle on the map. Um, whereas when you, and this is again, this is cases that we're talking about. And then up here, um, when you look, the dark, what we're looking for in the top map is the dark purple number, because that's where the higher unemployment is. And um, there's just not a ton of dark purple in the area. You see a little pocket there, um, but overall you see much more uh, a higher level of unemployment here. Now that's not to say that it's not an issue because even if you look at the clip, um, click at the lighter purple, you still see numbers um, that, that are not great. Um, but I personally, when I put this data together was a little bit surprised that there wasn't a, a darker, richer purple color up here in, um, in this New England area. Um, but, you know, I guess that's the whole point of this is, is uh, taking what you think you're going to see and putting it into the reality. So um, these are the sources that I used when I put this data together. Um, lots of different information on, on finding um, the different economic effects and, and kind of how, how the country has been affected and is going to continue to be affected. But um, I hope this was helpful. I think it was, for me, it was again, since so much of this ties directly into um, the industry that I work in and, you know, we've been serving our clients and, and uh, trying to help them kind of get through this. And so kind of being able to take a deeper dive into it um, and really be able to look at the numbers and kind of see where, 
where certain things that I thought were um, going to be one way actually kind of felt another way. But at the same time, also being able to, to put something that I thought into a true factual data picture. Um, it's been a pretty, pretty interesting experience. Uh, I hope it was helpful for you as well. And I hope um, that you got something out of it.